show their political support for the no war on Syria position. One of the things, if we want to talk about Canadian contributions to the US-led wars, one of the things that this government has done is an absolutely shameful, shameful position of denying support for American soldiers who have been coming up to Canada, refusing deployments to the wars in Iraq, are allowed to stay in this country. But Stephen Harper wants to do his best to silence anti-war voices, to silence the voices of people who have in fact seen this war. Our first speaker today, however, is not going to be silenced. He is going to stand up and he is going to let them know. He is a former member of the U.S. Navy who came up here to Canada to uh, refuse to uh, support the war in Iraq. He is a member of the War Resisters Support Campaign, which is an organization that has been pushing for asylum for U.S. war resisters here in Canada. The first speaker of the day, sisters and brothers, please welcome Chuck Wiley. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm going to try and get through this fast because it's raining on my sheet. Uh, so, here we are again, 10 years later, right? Everybody remember standing out here when the Iraq War was starting up? Pretty much the exact same situation was occurring. Uh, today, we're, we're doing the same thing again. Uh, I am Chuck Wiley, as you heard Sid say. I came up here in 2007 seeking asylum from uh, uh, refusing to participate any further in the war in Iraq specifically. Uh, I've been living here since 2007, waiting for a final decision on that request. And before we've even fixed all the problems from the last war, here we are going again. My fellow war resistors and I have blood on our hands. Let's be perfectly clear about that. Sometimes we did the killing in Iraq. Sometimes we ordered the killing in Iraq. Oh, Make no mistake that we share responsibility for the deaths that should not have happened in a war that was a criminal act. We took part in a war nobody should have allowed to happen, and we walked away from the table. All of us as a society should have walked away from the table then and demanded a change. Instead, we allowed that travesty to go forward. We told ourselves it would be the last time. We told ourselves the military-industrial complex would never again get away with such unchecked and unwarranted aggression. We told ourselves then, just like we tell ourselves in countless wars before, that it's never going to happen again. We promised we wouldn't buy into the rhetoric again. When major media and government begin parroting the same sound bites so often that they lose track themselves of what's truth and what's propaganda. Yesterday's legitimate government suddenly becomes a regime in need of change. Mass murder that's been overlooked for years on the grounds of political convenience suddenly needs to be a problem that the world has to deal with right now. When the truth isn't convincing or entertaining, lies begin to emerge. During the Iraq war, it was simply news channels like CNN pretending to broadcast from, the, from on the ground in Iraq when they're actually sitting safely in a news studio with a backdrop. Today, the lies get a little more onerous. Now it's hiring actors to pretend to be rebels begging for American intervention. Ten years ago, the specter of chemical weapons was raised. Those weapons turned out not just to be a lie, but a lie based on a setup. America thought then that the accusation of Saddam Hussein possessing chemical weapons was a safe bet because they still had the receipt in their pocket for all the sarin gas they sold him during the war with Iran. That safe bet turned out to be a step too far, but we've kind of forgotten that. Now the chemical weapons monster is raised one more time. Heads of state encourage a rush to action before any actual evidence can be gathered because that evidence might not support the cause. They hope you'll forget the urgency, what the urgency was when the dust settles. They hope you'll forgive the war crimes that will happen on the shoulders of an outright lie. And they'll lie to you again when it's time for the bombs to fall one more time. Ten years ago, the war in Iraq was sold to us as no big deal that would be over quickly. George Bush Jr. convinced all of us that the war on the ground would only last a matter of weeks. And we remember all too well the image of George Bush standing on the deck of Theodore Roosevelt, I was there, declaring mission accomplished. Only a few short months after he started that war, but before the real killing even got started in Iraq. As ridiculous as that image is to us now, 
remind yourselves how little the rhetoric has changed. Now it starts with promises of no major combat intervention, just targeted strikes <laughs> to degrade the regime. Already that language has started to change. All options being on the table, and we will not abandon the mission, will quickly turn into boots on the ground. How many years is it going to last this time? How many sons and daughters, sisters and brothers is it going to claim? Under the ridiculous idea that we can stop the killing of Syrians by killing more Syrians, how many wives and husbands are going to die on both sides before we declare mission accomplished this time? And please don't forget that veterans of the last war are still killing themselves in record numbers. Every 80 minutes, another veteran of one of these wars of aggression dies by their own hand. You don't see these numbers on a CNN body count. They're a quiet death toll that's still going. Remember that before we do this again. There are terrible things happening in Syria right now. There's a real problem that needs a real solution. But it needs a solution that benefits the people of Syria and not a solution that sweeps more people into a mass grave in the name of opportunity. The problem being solved by aggressive NATO military action in Syria has nothing to do with Syrians. It's a military attack that only solves the problem of justifying the obscene and criminal amounts of money that are being thrown into the sinkhole of military spending. If you spend your money on nothing but the military, the only response you have to any problem must be military. When the only tool in your bag is a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. Your country can't respond to its problems with insight and patience when the government happily robs your schools and your working class to build bombs, buys into the boondoggle of a ridiculously underperforming new death machine, and militarizes your society from the ground up. The military industrial complex is a death grip on your neighbor to the south, and now it has its sights on you. Don't turn your back. The Prime Minister is trying to ease you into accepting this war. Do not trust his soft language of Canada has no plans to join the mission. He avoids Parliament with this issue to avoid tougher language imposing his plans. Soon his rhetoric is going to change, just like Obama's rhetoric has changed. As the bombs start falling, you'll hear the familiar lines from Harper, from The Sun, and eventually from more respectable sources. Canada should be supporting its allies. Not Canada is killing Syrians that will get in the way. Not Canada should be committing war crimes alongside America, just supporting its allies. Prime Minister Harper knows that you have power. He fears you in the coming election, and he knows this war would still be raging then if it starts now. He's not stupid, but he is a coward. He will not let Canadians dying in another U.S.-led war cost him votes. But he's happy to be your cheerleader for you let another, yet another war of aggression until he thinks you bought into the retort. He doesn't think that you're going to punish him for that. Tell him that he must get in line with the will of the people and condemn this war before it starts. Tell him that his allegiance should be more to you than to Washington. And tell him to rise to the challenge of Jean Chrétien and say definitively that Canada will not enter this conflict without a ruling from the Security Council and that anyone who does is guilty of a war crime. Thank you. U.S. NATO hands off Syria! Thank you very much, Chuck. That was fantastic. It's always good to hear. Brothers and sisters, the warmongers' fingers are itching again. As if they have not shed enough blood in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Libya, in Yemen, in Pakistan. Now they want to go and bomb the people of Syria. We tell these warmongers, enough is enough. We are not going to stand silent while you perpetrate these war crimes against innocent people. 
speakers before me have already pointed out that bombing the people of Syria is not going to solve the problem in Syria. You don't solve a problem by killing more people. Enough people have been killed in Syria already. What Syria needs is a diplomatic solution, not a military solution. But we are pleased to note that both people in the US as well as Canada and Europe, they are pushing back. The first victory came in the vote in the British Parliament of about a week ago when the Parliament voted against this war resolution. Those people sitting in the British Parliament knew that the British people do not support another war based on a pack of lies. If Obama is really serious, I would suggest he should get hold of his friend Bandar bin Sultan who supplied these weapons to the Syrian rebels and these weapons blew in their faces. Let, let the truth be known. But you know we are being told that Obama has to do something in order to save face. Imagine he wants to kill innocent people to save face. What a disgrace. We would say to Obama, if you really want to save face, we can buy a bar of soap for you. You can wash your face. You don't go and kill people by saving your face. But I have another suggestion for Obama. If he really wants to save face, the day after he was inaugurated as President of the United States in January of 2009, he signed an executive order saying that he would close Guantanamo Bay in one year. Now it is more than five years, whereas that torture chamber is still operating. There are at least 150 prisoners held in Guantanamo Bay, of whom at least 86 have been cleared by the Pentagon itself that those people are completely innocent. And yet those people are still being held there. They are not being released. And if Obama needs some help, let me tell him his own executive order number was 13493. Let me repeat, the executive order that Obama signed the day after he was inaugurated as President of the United States is number 13493. So Obama, all you have to do is tell one of your executive assistants to pull that executive order and implement it. You will save face far more. There will be more people applauding you for doing that rather than going on bombing the innocent people of Syria. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank you all for coming out. And we should continue to press both our own government here in Canada. That they're not going to sneak in and try to attack Syria, nor are we going to allow the government of the United States or its NATO allies to perpetrate another war crime against innocent people. We say enough to wars. We don't want any more bombs falling on people's heads. We want people's tuition fees to be dropped. We want job for people, not war against innocent people. Thank you, and may God bless you. A resolution, and I want to read it to you. A Western military attack would only make this situation worse.
Labor Council condemns the use of chemical weapons in this or any other conflict and calls on Western governments to refrain from attacking Syria and instead work for a peaceful resolution to this incredibly complex situation. Yay. That was passed unanimously by our Labour Council, representing by our general members, representing 120,000 working people in the city. I also want to say that uh, certainly it is a very complex situation in Syria. It's made complex by the Americans and their media corporate allies who spread vicious lies about what is happening there. I want to mention a couple of them. First of all, they're one of the, one of the uh, lies that have come out. They said that uh, they paid the al-Assad government as, a ba as the bad guys. The whole controversy in terms of the Americans and the corporate media are the bad guys versus the good guys. They paint al-Assad government as, as the bad guys, accuse them of using chemical weapons. Is this true? No. no! There is no evidence. There is no evidence that Syria, the Syrian government has used the chemical weapons. But there are some truths. Who makes chemical weapons? American corporations. Whose stock rose on the day that the, uh, the, uh, they said the UN was going in to investigate chemical weapons? The company that makes the chemical weapons. Who is the nation has used chemical weapons more than any other nation in the world? America, the USA, they've used it in World War II, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, they've used it in the Korean War, they used it in the Vietnam War, the widespread use of napalm. This is the total hypocrisy on behalf of the US government and Barack Obama to use a charade to go in and attack Syria. The media has also said that the Syrian rebel forces are a national group fighting a civil war against a vicious dictator. Is this true? No. no. Lies. We know. We know it's lies. We know that originally there was some opposition to some neoliberal policies that the Al-Assad government was bringing in. We understand that problem as, as workers. We fight against neoliberalism all the time. But what was a legitimate a movement against some uh, cutbacks and neoliberalism was morphed, co-opted into with forces from the American funded forces, foreign funded forces, with missionary troops coming in to something that was very, very different than just a local opposition group. Some of those, most of those original opposition groups have left the, the so-called rebel forces and are supporting the Syrian government. That's what we know is true. We know that this so-called war in Syria is another attempt by the American government and their allies to destabilize the region, to put in another Saudi Arabia, a pro-imperialist, a uh, friend of, of the Americans, to destabilize that and to find out and to catch their natural resources in order to fund their, to uh, meet their corporate needs, their corporate greeds. We know that this is the problem. It is time that working people across the country, across the world, stood up and said, no, no, no bombing in Syria. No, no, no bombing of Syria. We must unite. We must build the forces of peace. We know that working people are, are not for war, that they want to ensure that they have a, uh, they have a civilization that they can leave for their grandchildren. My grandson is here today. I've been fighting for peace all my life. I hope I don't have to fight all his life as well. Thank you very much. U.S. NATO! Hands of Syria! 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 On the Canadian Peace Alliance Steering Committee, Sisters and brothers, please welcome Kim Carriage. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to thank my brother Sid, um, welcome all the brothers and sisters here today, and thank the speakers before me for their very thoughtful comments. Okay. Can you hear me now? Um, I'm just going to read a statement from some activists in the region of Syria who work at Greenpeace and oppose war in all of its forms. Oh, man, really? Okay, sorry. 
Um, we strongly condemn the ongoing atrocious violence against the people of Syria. We are opposed to war and all violence, whether perpetrated by government or opposition. The use of chemical weapons is a war crime no matter who is responsible. And we oppose foreign military intervention, which will only risk escalating the conflict further. Violence never resolves disputes, but does serious harm to both people and the environment on which they depend. Rather than fuel the cycle of violence, foreign powers must use active diplomacy to defuse the tension, stop sending arms to Syria, and ensure humanitarian relief and protection for the 1.5 civilians, 1.5 million civilians fleeing the violence. We call for an immediate ceasefire by all sides, followed by diplomatic measures to formulate a just resolution to make this resolution sustainable, transparency in governance, and the protection of Syrian citizens, human and civil rights are key. As the changing climate increases the frequency of resource conflicts around the world, the global community needs to urgently invest in the pursuit of peace or the sad reality of fleeing refugees and suffering civilians will become ever more frequent and a serious threat to human security. Thank you. Come up now and give us a few words. Again, this is Joe Tahan, who's a Syrian-Canadian who's been mobilizing in opposition to the war on Syria. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much and thank you for everybody coming. Come on, come on. Uh, I know I have papers in my hand, but uh, I'm not even going to read from them barely. These are just points. Uh, I, I, I'm with a group called uh, uh, Canadian uh, uh, Syrians uh, in Canadians, Canadian Toronto from Syria. Anyways, I'm, I'm more of a bigger group called Humanity. And Humanity wants democracy worldwide. And from what I see around the world, the majority of the world is against this... Uh, strike on Syria and from uh, from what I understand the only people that are kind of supporting this kind of action is France, United States of America, Saudi Arabia and possibly Canada. To me the red line, Obama keeps on talking about a red line and as a leader of the, uh, supposedly the leader of the world, he should be uh, acting with uh, by example rather than by tyranny uh, when the whole world is saying no china russia and all these other countries and we have only a few other countries uh, wanting to go to war this doesn't uh, show democracy this shows tyranny um, i would say maybe 10 percent of the world are against are, are with this war and about 90% of the world is against this war. These are just points that I'm trying to get put out. We all want democracy. Uh, everything about this whole strike is about minority talking, not the majority. Democracy is about a majority speaking and being heard. Uh, the strike, as I said, is a minority uh, choice. Other than that, uh, even the, rebel the rebellion in Syria, I will tell you right now from what I understand, is a minority as they are recruiting jihadists from all over the world to come and fight. Meanwhile, the Syrian army has been fighting for two and a half years strong with just the people of Syria. The, who, are, who is the army of any nation? It is the children, the men and the women of the country. So two and a half years, they've been standing by the Bashar, by the country, and I, to me that shows that's the, min that's the majority, and a minority is, are the people that are trying to get people from the outside, and they're still not being successful in what they're doing. So please, Mr. Obama, um, work uh, or act as, because we all look to America as it's the democracy and the leader of the world. And we want you to practice what you preach rather than do the opposite. The whole world is against you, against this uh, preemptive strike. And we are all here standing here to stand against this to our Canadian government, to America, to the world. The, as we were chanting before, um, uh, the people united will, will not be defeated. So God bless and I hope... Uh, we could change something. Thank you.
The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people need for we don't want your bloody war. One, two, three, four. We don't want your bloody war. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing. Stop the hate. Five, six. Seven, eight, stop the killing, stop the hate. One, two, three, four, we don't want your bloody war. One, two, three, four, we don't want your bloody war. Five, six, seven, eight, stop the killing, stop the hate. Five, six, seven, eight, stop the killing, stop the hate. Wonderful, you don't have to get down, man. <laughs> He's doing a good job up here with the chance. All right, thank you very, very much for that speech as well, Joe. Our last speaker who's going to be coming up here today is someone who uh, needs very little introduction to people who have been around these rallies over the course of the years. He's the former vice president of the Canadian Arab Federation, a staunch anti-war activist and a member of the steering committee of the Canadian Peace Alliance. Sisters and brothers, please welcome Brother Ali Malak. I salute you for coming out today in this rainy day to join thousands and thousands of people around the globe to say no to war. No to war. No to war. Brothers and sisters, friends and comrades, we are four days away from September 11. And that house of terror claiming to be fighting terrorism. Just a little history. Al-Qaeda and their thugs were created by the USA, by Europe, and by the Saudi Arabian regime. And now they are the best allies in a war against Syria and its people. And we should never refer to those people as jihadis. I'm a Muslim. I know what jihad means. Those people are thugs, are murderers, and killers. Because they attacked minority two days ago, they invaded a historic, a historic Christian town, Arab town in Syria. They stole their churches, they tortured their houses, and they called them Salibiyin, which means Kafir. Those people do not represent Islam and do not represent Muslims. Don't be fooled by them. Those are the agents of the USA, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Turkey and Europe to wage war against Syria, against Iran, against Lebanon and Hezbollah, against resistance and any voice that is daring to say no to USA. And we will say no to USA. No to USA. No to USA. Shame, shame, USA. If, Obama, if Obama is a true leader, he should care about the people of the USA. More than 70% of American people have no health care. More than 50% have no enough means to support themselves and their families and their children in school. Instead of creating a war that will benefit only the corporate rich and be paid by the blood of Syrians and the poor people, he should take care of his own people and provide for them. Shame on you, Obama! Shame! Shame! USA! Shame! I'm here for Canada. We say equally shame on Stephen Harbour. Our brothers and sisters in the reserve, the First Nation people, have been under waterboarding advisory for the last 12 years. They don't have enough resources to fight poverty. We have homeless people in the streets of every major city in Canada. We have people relying on a food bank. And instead of spending billions of dollars for a necessary war, let's take care of each other. Let's take care of the people. Shame on you, Stephen Harbour. Shame, shame, Harbour. Brothers and sisters, we have no other way but to stand together and to challenge those thugs of war and murders over there and also challenge the mainstream media because this mainstream media does not tell you the whole picture they don't tell you about the atrocities committed 
by the murderers and thugs supported by the regional and western power. They don't tell you about the majority of the people of Syria are against war and they are not with Jabhat al-Nusra. They are not with Tahrir al-Islam. They are not with the Springfall because the legitimate demand, the legitimate demand of the Syrians for reform and democracy have been hijacked and stolen by those killers. Syrian people, like any people, have the right to live with dignity, peace, and democracy. But this got nothing to do with revolution. This is a conspiracy and corrupted plot to take care of their own agenda against the people of Syria. And I would say, shame on some secular voices in the Syrian opposition. We told them to leave and have a go. You have the right to speak up against the regime. You have the right to demand reform. But you have no right to work with outside entity against your own country and your own people. You have no right as a people to claim to be on the left, to work with backwarded people like Al-Nusra and Al-Qaeda against your own people in Syria. You should have distanced yourself from those killers. Sadly, they did not. Sadly, they did not. And the whole Syrian people are paying price for that. But we are here. We are here together. And we will continue to be here. To speak up for freedom and democracy for all. For justice for all. And more importantly, we will continue speaking up against war, against aggression, against oppression and exploitation. Don't let this terrorist boy Obama fool you or Stephen Harbour. If they care about the people's human rights, they would have care about the Palestinian. They would have care about the Afghanis. They would have care about the Iraqis. They would have care about so many people around the globe who are facing very tough and serious situation. But they don't. Because only what they care about is their own greedy and dirty agenda to exploit the people and dominate under the so-called a new Middle East. This is not a new Middle East. This is murderous plot a la mode of sykes Pico, but with much more vicious phase. It's called, as they name it, blood borders. They are redrawing the borders in the region by the blood of people. They are killers and we are against them. Thank you again. And the people united will never be defeated. 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 The United States, they found that only 9% of Americans are in favor of an attack on Syria. And in fact, the mobilizations, as I say, are happening around the world. Across Europe today, even one of the most surprising ones, something that I was a little bit surprised about, is the Pope has in fact come out in opposition to the war on Syria and is going to be holding a vigil today at St. Peter's Square at the Vatican in opposition to the war. U.S. NATO, hands off Syria! 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 And unfortunately, we do anticipate that we're going to have to be coming out here again. That opposition is broad, but there are also supporters of this war in Syria. If you look at the United States, there's an awful lot of corporations who are standing around right now looking at a potential windfall because of the war. One of the things that I found kind of astounding this week tucked away in the business pages, it was actually last week, Raytheon Corporation. This is the corporation that makes the cruise missiles that are being aimed at Syria right now. They are having a field day. Their, their stock prices have jumped over the course of the last two weeks based on the fact that this war may happen. And they have become, therefore, very, very prominent supporters of the war and are putting their lobby efforts 
into the uh, supporting the American uh, uh, war. The reality is, is there's a fight going on in the U.S. right now. Most of the Congress people who are now being asked to decide whether or not they should support this war are getting hundreds and hundreds of phone calls from constituents. And in report after report, they're saying they are not getting one person calling up saying that they support this war. The American people don't support this war. The Canadian people don't support this war. The British people don't support this war. That's why we are out here again today to give voice to that expression. Unfortunately, Barack Obama does not seem to have ears to hear the people in his own country or the people around the world. We know that there's going to be a vote in Congress on Monday. There's going to be mobilizations, as I say, all across the United States over the course of the next couple of days to try to pressure congressional leaders to say no to the war. But under the circumstances, it seems as though Barack Obama is really, really hell-bent on going to war in Syria. And so unfortunately, he has decided that on Tuesday night, he is going to provide what he calls the complete case for war in Syria. We're all going to be watching that on Tuesday night, and we're all going to be prepared to get out on the streets again to say no to this war. No, no, no to war! Hands up! Syria! Obama. No, no, Obama. no to war! Hands, Hands off Syria! No, no, no to war! Hands off Syria! No, no, no to war! Hands off Syria! And so no. us here in Toronto and across the country here in Canada, we're going to be coming out again as well. At this point, the details of the demonstrations that will be coming up are not yet finalized, but we urge you, go to the Canadian Peace Alliance website, sign up for the action alerts, Go to the Facebook page, sign up so that you will be able to hear about the next calls for days of action. We do know that we're going to be out here on the streets again. Before we go, though, there's another thing that we need. There are people wandering around in the crowd with little wicker baskets. We're asking you to dig into your pockets. If you can find some change, that's fantastic. If we don't hear it drop in because it's bills, that's even better. Because we need that money to be able to actually continue with these campaigns. The Peace Alliance is organizing a whole series of things over the next little while, including lobbying of Canadian organizations and Canadian members of Parliament to tell them to demand no war on Syria. At this point, we have not heard much from the opposition, but we do need to pressure them, and we need to pressure them quite quite hard. That's why we're asking you to dig in and to help us out so that we can continue with these campaigns. And as I say, keep your eyes on the uh, web pages and on the Facebook pages so that you can see stuff as it comes up. If the war ends up being launched this week, we will be out again. In the event that Obama makes the case on Tuesday and the bombs start falling on Wednesday, we will be out again. In fact, there is an ongoing call, a sort of a standing call for all of the organizations in Canada that we will be out 5 o'clock at the U.S. Consulate whenever and whatever day the bombs start falling because we need to register our opposition to this war. We need to actually point at that consulate right now and let them know exactly how we feel. Shame, shame, USA! How many kids did he kill today? Shame, shame, USA! How many kids did he kill today? Shame, shame, USA! How many kids did you kill today? Shame, shame, USA! How many kids did you kill today? In Iraq and in Afghanistan and in Libya, and we in Canada, this government in this country has blood on its hands by its continued support for those atrocities. We will be out here and we will be standing up. Thank you, sisters and brothers, for coming out and braving what was, in fact, not a terribly pleasant day as far as the weather is concerned, but we kept the energy up and we are saying what we need to say. One, two, three, four. We don't want your bloody war. One, two, three, four. We don't want your bloody war. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing. Stop the hate. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing, stop the hate. One, two, three, four, we don't want your bloody war. One, two, three, four, we don't want your bloody war. Five, six, seven, eight, stop the killing, stop the hate. Five, six, seven, eight, stop the killing, stop the hate. Let's all turn ourselves around. Let's point at that consulate. And let's make sure, fists in the air, that they know exactly how we feel. U.S. NATO, hands off Syria! U.S. NATO, hands off Syria!
U.S. NATO, hands off Syria! U.S. NATO, hands off Syria! Thank you. 